Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover War 20 here, and I'm here with a brand new movie re no, not movie review, another top 11 follow-up list to one I did last spring. And it's, it's a horror-related one, and, um, and this is because I've watched more of these and discovered more of them. There are a lot of these I have seen. I just didn't include on my other list, but here they all are, and so yeah. Just so you all know, these are not horror remakes. This is another top 11 worst horror sequels. Because I watched more bad horror sequels last year. And I some of these I forgot about. But now I have remember them again. And so I am now putting them on this list. Because I discovered more bad sequels. So with that being started... Let's go on with the another top 11 bad horror sequels I had to sit through, made me want to vomit, or just, it just insulted my intelligence, or just pissed me off to get through. So here we go, let's start with number 11. Kicking off at number 11 is going to be Saw 3D, or on DVD is called Saw the Final Chapter. There are so many things this movie does wrong that it's easier to just use a list to describe some of them. One. The acting is atrocious, I'm not just talking in comparison with the other films. The acting in this one is some of the worst I've ever seen. Two, because it was made in 3D, the graphics are cheesy, and the gore effects are all pinkest and look so shitty over the top. The last bastion of reason to watch a Saw film, the brutal trap scenes, are effectively ruined by the dumbass 3D that last executives decided to do because they wanted to make money. Finally, where's I? Whereas it looks like this movie is going to wrap up the series in a meaningful way, it has its own plotline for almost 79 minutes and lazily wraps up the big picture stuff in the final 10. Even the big surprise with Lord Gore and being alive in the final minutes literally turned me off instead of provoking the desired wow effect. However, if there is a good thing about it, they thankfully got rid of Hoffman after this. So at least there's one redeeming quality there. But yeah, other than that, Saw 3D is a crap way to end the series and I put it at number 11. Alright, so at number 10 would probably have to be Paranormal Activity 4. This is probably the one Paranormal Activity movie or sequel I only saw once and vow to never, ever watch again. Paranormal Activity The Ghost Dimension was also crap, but that movie is just hilariously bad. bad. You can watch it as an unintentional comedy. Paranormal Activity 4, on the other hand, I can honestly think in any other movie more boring than this one. Absolutely nothing interesting happens in the entirety of this so-called horror film. All the previous Paranormal Activity films, including the first one, consisted mostly of padding, with many unnecessary lawn scenes where the main characters weren't doing anything relevant but filming their whole house. But Paranormal Activity 4 is just insulting. There isn't any kind of real plot here, only padding. The only interesting aspect from the original Paranormal Activity film is that it re renewed the concept of Haunted House in cinema, so you can kind of see why it was so successful, because it had a genius concept, but it was executed horribly. Apart from that, there wasn't anything remarkable about the movie. The characters were flat, stupid, and the plot was generic. But due to its surprising success, of course Paramount decided to go make some fucking sequels. And the quote from Ben symbolizes the whole film. Did, did you expect me to believe such an obvious lie? Worse yet, did you expect me to know you were lying, then act like you were not? There's nothing even remotely interesting in this film. This, does, did this director really expect me I was supposed to enjoy this movie? So yeah, Paranormal Activity 4 is still the worst Paranormal Activity movie, and I put it at number 10. Kicking off at number 9 is going to be for a sci-fi horror movie, and this is one that just pisses me off, makes the whole ending of the last movie a joke. And I reviewed this back at the beginning of the year, and that is... Alien... Alien... Free! If you recall the ending of the last film, Ellen Ripley survived her encounters with an alien colony, along with the Marine Hicks and a young survivalist much like herself named Newt. They were put into cyrogenic sleep and all was well. The story ended happily and should have stayed that way. It was the ending we all loved. Now it's <laughs> ruined. Ripley is picked up by a large spaceship another number of years later. She's the only survivor. The spaceship suffered a malfunction. Hicks bled to death and Newt drowned in her chiral chamber. Wow. Perfect. But Ripley believes that Newt may have been a pentagram with a chestbuster after finding traces of acid on the floor of the ship. This movie was like a math... This movie... 
is short is basically just a fuck you to aliens and the character Ripley and even a fuck you to the first movie. I could, like, Resurrection was also bad, but Ron Perlman saved that movie. AVP, also terrible, but at least Rats Hendrickson's in that movie, so there's some interesting things. The prequel films I can enjoy. Alien 3, I mean, AVP Requiem is on my other list, so I can't include it, but Alien 3, no. This shit, I never, ever want to see again in my life. Coming off at number 8 is another found footage movie, and that is VHS Viral. Like, when I watched all the VHS movies back in 2020, they were okay, they're not masterpieces, but this one? Oh, I've never rated anything that wanted to rate anything this low. But this movie astounded me at how terrible it was. Everything, and I mean everything, is done to the lowest standard. I tolerated the previous two VHS movies because they had some enjoyably scary moments, and the newest one, 94, so much more. And honestly, it's a disgrace that this movie tries to be part of this franchise. This is such a bad movie from start to finish, but at least it's like only 81 minutes long, but holy shit. There are some moments that are just funny, bad, but that's the only thing you get out of it. It's not scary, it's not creepy, it's just stupid, and it's downright cringeworthy. Like... The skater scene straight up felt like a student film project. Most of these ones in this did. But that one just took the cake. So yeah, in short, skip this. Number seven is probably going to have to be a sequel to an American horror remake. And that is, of course, The Grudge 2. This is one of the most boring, horror-lacking pieces of garbage ever blessed to the world of cinema. It's basically all it is is a series of scenes that are meant to give the audience a supposed shock from a ridiculously looking meowing child. Not well done at all, the whole movie was just a grudge going around and killing random people out of nowhere. Random people that have nothing to do with the story get killed. Like the three schoolgirls, for example. The family at the beginning has nothing to do with the story either. I believe them to be a random family that never went to the house and never had anything to do with the killings of the grudge. Did not impress me at all. I was not scared. And I remember Sir Michelle Giller in the first one? Well, this movie basically pulls an Alien 3 on her character and kills her off. <sighs> Had they learned anything from that movie? I didn't jump at any parts, and the whole movie was just a random piece of crap to get more money off of because the Grudge one made so much money at the box office. And it makes the Grudge one look like crap also. Which was an alright movie, but a slightly overhyped. But yeah, the Grudge 2 is just a bore fest, and it should be called the bore fest, the movie. Number six is probably going to be for a movie I actually kind of tolerate, but it's still pretty bad on this list, so it's still going to be on this list anyway, and that is, of course, Jason X. While this movie is fairly enjoyable, the entire idea of Jason in space doesn't sit well with me. Why bring one of cinema's most legendary murderers into outer space? The idea is a bit ridiculous if you ask me. Despite this major flaw, Jason X is a pretty fun little horror movie. The story, while it's just a little unbelievable, works on worse levels, the whole space age atmosphere to the film was interesting, so any sci-fi fans can relate a little. The cast was mostly a bunch of no-name actors, but they all give fairly good performances. Keep it in mind this is Friday the 13th sequel, and the 10th one might I add. This was one really thought of killing in the film that I thought was extremely unique and clever. I won't say anything to give it away, but but I'm sure that you'll know what it is when you see it, but, but yeah. Despite those, it's still a pretty bad movie, but you can still watch it as a guilty pleasure. It's just an entertainingly bad movie, but it kind of still counts on this list to me. Okay, so at number five is going to be, for a sequel made 20 years later, Lost Boys, The Tribe. I don't know what they were thinking. The story of this film is exactly the same as the first film. New people move into town with vampires, one of them joins the clan, and is becoming a vampire. Yep, yeah, where have you seen that before? The acting was just awful, and there were hardly any vampire moments. It's cool that only thing I liked was that Corey Feldman returns, but he doesn't show up much, and his brother is not even in it. The script was just stupid. Basically, just, just the whole film is stupid. He has no vampire originality. To even use the name Lost Boys in title this movie is absolutely insulting in itself. For fans of the original cult classic, I strongly urge you to not even bother wasting a second on this. So yeah, just go watch the first one if you want to see an actually good version of this movie. I even regret seeing this myself, and I still haven't watched the first yet. 
Okay, at number four is probably going to be The Final Destination 2009, another 3D horror movie. Everything this film could have gotten wrong, it did. Horrible pacing, cringeworthy weak dialogue, terrible music, and literally some of the worst acting I have ever seen. All this coupled with bad special effects and unimaginative deaths, we have a horror film that would work better as spoof comedy. Unfortunately, this film takes itself seriously, and everybody comes off looking stupid because of it. This film has none of the originality or suspense that the previous installments had. In fact, it's hard to believe it's even part of the same series, and the acting was just beyond horrible. I actually sat there with my mouth open when I watched this on DVD, like... As each actor spoke, I kept thinking, okay, it can't get much worse, only to be even more horrified by the next. Bombi Campo and Chantel Vincent star as the main leads Nick and Laurie. They fail miserably to give the eyes any reason to care for their characters. Bobby gives the same I'm slightly confused look throughout the whole film and shows no emotion whatsoever. So yeah. This film, like Saw 3D, is another failed 3D horror film that can be easily avoided. Alright, we are down to the big bad three. And for number three, is probably going to be for a film that pisses me off that this even exists. When I thought of it, this one came up. Cabin Fever 2, Spring Fever. Wow! Straight from its introduction, it's cheap and full of horrific humdrum outcomes that follows the remainder of the film. It continues to first enter its cliffhanger with no attentions to be creative or interesting, the prequel film Patient Zero is not really any good either, but there were some good gore moments in there, so it gets a pass on its list, plus that's a prequel, and this is for sequels. Cabin Fever 2, from start to finish, is horrendous. Instead, it focuses having extensive scenery and extremely grotesque nonsense that doesn't add any positive energy or excitement from beginning to end. It's not just foolishly gruesome or too disgusting to watch, it's too grueling to experience in the worst imaginable expectation that engraves scars. It takes more risk to its material to raise a level of shock value that gives audiences a meaningful horror experience. While it, part while it partakes having decent cinematography, a humorously mediocre soundtrack, and the remainder of the film is just a terrible mixture of high school shenanigans on steroids while attempting to be mildly adventurous as it engages more shallowness. And not to mention, the ending scene... Ugh. I didn't even want to see a lot of stuff what happened in the final five minutes with that girl in the strip club. So yeah, this movie definitely is at number three for sure. Okay, number two is one I have a lot to say about because it is a big piss-off sequel and a big fuck you to a horror icon, Halloween Resurrection. John Carpenter's 1978 Halloween is wholly deserving of its status as a horror classic. It's still one of the freakiest films personally seen, Intro introduced the world to one of the horror's most iconic villainous characters, Michael Myers. Which is why it's such a shame that not only are all the sequels nowhere near as good, but, but that the decline is qual in quality is so drastic. Okay, the original Halloween is difficult to follow from, but most of the sequels at, at least look like ever as many to them. Halloween 2 1981, Halloween Kills, Halloween 2018, Halloween H2O are four exceptions, and the fourth film, I guess, is eh, it has some good moments. Halloween Resurrection is the worst offender, one of the worst sequels ever of the genre and any genre, and one of the most pointless. Halloween H20 was a perfect place to stop a series, to have it resurrected so badly in a way that disgraces the Halloween name to intelligence insulting degrees is enough to make the blood boil. The only good thing is Jamie Lee Curtis, and she and her iconic character are written out in such a slap in the face way that that is seen like that is anything but creepy or suspenseful. Sadly, that is the one scene that actually feels like it belongs in a Halloween film. The rest, nope. Laughably awful dialogue, a script that shouldn't have been approved beyond first draft, if ever that, can also be found. The film is even more ineptly directed than Halloween Six and the non-horror scenes in Season of the Witch. Visually, it is far too gimmicky that severely gets in the way of the atmosphere, in summary, should have never been made, an unforgivably poor quality and pointless excuse of a sequel in a film. And do I even have to mention Busta Rhymes at this rate? <clears throat> and with that, the number one worst horror sequel on this list is none other than... Texas Chainsaw Massacre 
the next generation. Yep, this was easily the number one on this list when making it for sure. This fourth entry in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the worst films of all time. It's one of the few movies that has zero redeeming qualities. The acting is just awful. Young Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey start in a film in some of their earliest roles. Like, some people say Matthew McConaughey was the best thing in this movie. I didn't even like his character at all. His character wasn't even funny at all. His character was just annoying from start to finish. Like, I just wanted to slam my TV every time his character was on screen. The direction? Where is the direction of this? Leatherface chases people around like he's blind. He misses people right in front of him. And not, not to mention, this was written and directed by a woman. So they have Leatherface dressed like a drag for most of the film. And he's always like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he basically whines and yelps all the whole movie. Which is just ridiculous. You're supposed to fear him, not laugh at how stupidly written he is. The writing just makes no sense and consists of nonstop cursing and yelling and grunting for Matthew's character himself. So yeah, this movie can go fuck itself. The end. Whew! And there we go. That's pretty much it for my second top 11 worst horror sequels list, so let me know in the comments down below what you think of these picks, if you are a horror fan. Let me know what you think of these, which ones you've seen, which ones you've not seen, but just let me know which ones you think are also bad and should have been on this list, but until then, guys, that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and if you like this and want to see more, then don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.